Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Waiting on everybody to come on in. Good morning, good morning. While I check and see how this stuff sounds. Oh, this is embarrassing. <laughs> this is an ugly picture. Come on in, everybody. Come on in. Come on in. Bring it around town. Bring it around town. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm about to get this thing going. Boom, boom, boom. Good morning, people. Good morning, people. Good morning, good morning. Tap on in, good morning. I wish it would show me who be up in here. I really can't see who up in here. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Waiting on a few more people to get in. And then we're gonna get everything started. Let me see if I can find out how. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Come on in, everybody. Come on in. Come on in. What's up, Kevin? Hope you stay in for the uh, for the talk, Kevin. Hope you stay in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's having a good morning. Hope everybody woke up on the good side of the bed today. Cause listen. We changing. We gotta change our lives. We changing lives today. As y'all can see, I finally got a name for the live stream. He said I got my coffee. And I'm here for it. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, I got. I finally got a name for the live stream. I'm gonna call it Live with Brian. That's what I'm gonna call it. It's a play on my name. See how that goes. But you know how we normally do. For everybody that's tuning in and all, and for the new people as well. Um. Well, first of all, let's share this. Let's get this thing shared. Let's get this to people because. We don't want to miss out on getting everybody what they need this morning. And I don't want to say too much and get too much started before my people get up in here. People that I know for sure that be tuning in. Let me send all this off real quick. I know all these people at work. I ain't even going to send that to them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Send that to Kendall. All right. Good morning, good morning. Y'all know how we do. Let's start off with our affirmations. So what we typically do for all the new people that I'm seeing in here, what we typically do is whenever I start off the word, you finish the phrase. So if I say I am out aloud where you at or in your head, if you're at work, if you can't say it out loud, if I if I say I am, you follow up with whatever you feel as though is best for you. So if I say I am, you should say wonderful. If you if I say I feel, you should say happy. Now is the the part of the live stream. Good morning, everybody that's tuning in. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, now is the time where you we really get our we set the tone for the live stream basically, you know. So we have to start with our positive affirmations for all the new people that's coming in. Y'all, all the regular people I'm seeing that's coming in. Our normal thing. All right, I am. I am thankful for, I receive, I am, I will be, I am hoping for, I am expecting, I am thankful for, today is, my day will be, and I am grateful for. Once again, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hopefully, if I have enough time, I want to do it yesterday, but, you know, time kind of ran thin. But if I have time today, I would really love to go live with somebody or a few people that decide to come uh, into the live stream today. But I kind of want to turn today into um, a Q&A type situation, you know, so if you guys Excuse me. If you guys have any questions or if you guys have any particular topics that you want me to talk about 
um, message me real quick or you could just put it in the comment section it doesn't matter once again this is a very open platform and this is a very open live stream to where we talk about what we want to talk about we're not tied down to any particular topic we're not tied down to any particular uh, particular ideology um everything that we do and everything that we're hoping to do in this live stream is to just bring people closer together is to enlighten everybody for things that they do or don't know and to just have a good time and have a good discussion so if you have something you want me to talk about any questions any topics in particular it don't matter um just go ahead and put that in the comment section real quick or you can message me and he's trying to see what's my oh hold up somebody saying they can't hear me let me see yeah i think that i think that's your phone Cree. that might be your phone let's hold up y'all let me let me help Cree. Cree be up in here trying to get it yeah, let me know if y'all could um if y'all could hear me too, cause I mean I'm hearing it through my iPad, but I want to make sure that everybody is uh hearing everything. I'm gonna share it to them one more time, one more time. Let me just send it again. Gotta help my boy out. He got it. Okay, good. Good morning, Cree. Good morning. Good morning. I had to, I had to make sure you was in there. I had to make sure you was in the building. I had to make sure Cree in the building. Um, let's see. All right, so. One thing I've really been noticing, um, he said was connected to my car. Turn and turn me up. Let the whole neighborhood hear me. Um, one thing, good morning, Bree. I see you. Good morning. One thing I kinda I didn't really I ain't gonna say I plan to talk about it, but I've been seeing it uh on social media a lot. And I forgot the dude's name. But y'all been seeing that that uh it was not a press conference, but it was like a a, a hearing that they had about the kid that um shot up everybody at like the protests and everything and they saw him well, basically, you know, there's memes going around with him fake crying and stuff like that. And, you know, they, they have him on the, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, that guy. Yeah, his name. And they have they have him like all over social media, this, that and the third. But, you know, you know what really sticks out to me? You know what, what I really think about when I see that is how I'm, I'm and I don't want to take it in a negative. I don't want to put this paint this in a negative way towards a, a specific type of people but y'all know who i'm talking about it's so crazy how somebody can shoot up a whole bunch of innocent people right because something that's going our movement is going on in the name of justice or in the name of vindication right somebody could shoot up some people kill some people go about their life the fact that he was even able to leave to begin with but go about their life go take pictures with people and talk about freedom in america and yeah and blah 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 and you stood on that, right? You know, you 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 know how <laughs> you know how solid or you know how like in your mind made up you gotta be to really pull that trigger, that type of gun at that. You know, and then you come back on the he was on the uh the judging table and all that type of stuff, and dude was like crocodile tear crying. Like he was up there <laughs> crying and I'm sitting there like, Man, I didn't seen enough kids fake cry and I didn't seen enough adults fake cry and I didn't seen enough people playing guilty to fake cry and so said be up there now nah, he wanted to plead borderline insan insanity or he's real sad and emotional about the situation and it's like where all them tears was whenever you was in the act of doing it you know it's like is it's, that's the thing that and i get it he fighting for his so say freedom like he, he made a mistake or or oh well i'm not trying to go down like this or blah 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 because they painted me as a hero but now society is giving me my due diligence and blah 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 Whatever the outcome may be, because in my in my personal opinion, I'd be feeling like all this stuff is staged anyway. Them people be already be having verdicts picked and juries picked and all that type of stuff. They already know how they want it to go. Anytime we have national screenings or national uh um type of trial case and stuff like that, them people already be having all that stuff planned out. It's a game they play. But my in my opinion, when it comes out to this type of situation, I'd be feeling like sometimes people don't even really be needing to, to go to trial for stuff. It's like, bro, there's live footage. You know, because, like, the one thing that bothers me about this day and age when it comes out to uh, the, the, the law system and stuff like that is, like, you'll have a video, right? Uh, and not just, like, the little snippet videos, like, the too many videos of what people caught after the altercation started. But, like, you'll have evidence these days from, like, start to finish of how the people was in the area minding their business and then something popped off and they saw this person get aggravated or they started something and then all this other stuff happened. Then when the cops came... So all that stuff would be going on. And they'll be like, well, allegedly person did X, Y, and Z. And with phones, the phones uh, these days, everything being HD and you can hear, hit audio very clearly. Don't law forbid you put some headphones on. You can really hear what's going on, you know? And they'd be like, well, allegedly this happened and blah, 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 blah. And I just be sitting there like, 
What do you mean allegedly? You know, yeah, like this happened. Look at it. It happened. Well, we're trying to see the the point of view because, in in my opinion, from what I've from just studying the law and studying trials and stuff like that, what makes a lawyer great is not so much oh how how long they've been in school and and what they know as far as how well they know the law and blah 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 blah. Cause you got some lawyers out there that's technically good that know the law, but they don't know how to talk inside the law room. Well, the the court the courtroom. I'm about to say, I don't know why I say law room, but they don't know how to talk inside the courtroom because you can know the law and you can know your way around it. But if you can't word it properly, you're probably not going to win the case. You know how many innocent people then went to jail behind a lawyer that didn't know how to really speak right, even though they were innocent, they didn't know how to fight the case. You know, and yet you got to really think about and that really makes you think about the the um the judicial system whenever it comes down to like what they deem as lawful and what they deem as right and morale and blah, 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 blah. Because as much as people don't want to, uh, don't want to really talk about it or agree on it, but slavery was legal. You know, all these type of discriminations and segregation that was legal, you know, and granted times have changed, but I still find it strange that the technology and the evidence that we have these days and, and how social, how fast social, it's so crazy. You'll have people, on social media be more accurate with the story of what's happening before the news people get there before excuse me before it even gets to the tvs before it gets to the law office and be accurate everybody know somebody or who page to go to whenever stuff go down in your city there's always a select amount of people that's going to call them channel five or they're going to be the fbi because they're going to know before everybody else know you know words spread around quicker through the community than they do when you wait on the, the news outlets and stuff like that but i say all that to say Man, we really got to start rethinking about how we moving in society when it comes down to the law and what we will and will not allow. Because, you know, you know what crazy is what's crazy to me is like people. OK, so gas prices flying up. Law for big gas prices in, in Louisiana go up to four dollars. Right. People will lose their mind. But we're not talking about are we not protesting? Are we not making great aware awareness of all the other things that's going on in our state? Right. Like. The unlawful arrests, you know, people innocently dying, uh, teachers being underpaid, you know, businesses being shysty and stuff like that. All the other actual, quote unquote, crimes and, and unlawful things that's going on in the area. We don't get a lot of traction about it. You know, so I just find that I just find that something to really chew on and think about in time in the times that we're in, because it's one of them things to where it's like, what are we really doing as a society? You know? It's like, are we are we really just going with the motions? Are we really just following the trends and we just following this, that and the third? Or are we just doing what we feel as though is right? You know, and we just going with or with the majority saying we going with it rather than doing our own research or actually taking the time to really try to understand what's going on and do our due diligence and give it a fair process and trial. You know, so that's one of the things I woke up with uh, on my mind. And once again, like I said, if y'all got some topics y'all want to talk about, put that in the comment section. But another thing I kind of wanted to talk about, I know I'm kind of jumping, but um, I was watching this. Well, I was on my way back from Lafayette yesterday and I was uh, listening to what I forgot. What's her name? This, I forgot her name. But it's a it's a lady that's talking about like uh, BBLs are done. And I was like, what you mean done like that? No, it's like it's an all time high right now. Like people, everybody want to everybody wants to do something with their body if they got the money to do it. Right. And I'm sitting there like, well, what does she mean by done? And then she was saying how a lot of celebrities are going back to their surgeons and taking all of this stuff out of their bodies and going for like a more slim, natural look. And like all of a sudden having a real done up body and a real botched up body ain't really the thing no more. And a lot of people are realizing, like, th apparently there's a lot of people within the ages of, like, um, that, because, you know, people have sugar dads and stuff like that now. So, like, people can kind of, and people can go do botch jobs in other countries and come back. But um, that's more affordable to them rather than going to, like, a real, you know, a real surgeon, I guess you can say a real surgeon. But um, they have, this. it's like a, the age gap was, like, 19, 18, 19 to, like, 26. And... The girl that was doing the video, she was like, well, she thought about it. She contemplated it. You know, she's like, that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. If you don't want to do it, blah, 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 blah. She's like, but I'm noticing because she says she's 5'10", right? So she's tall. And she was like, but a lot a lot of other people, a lot of other women 
are noticing that like they get all of this stuff done to their body and then they reach the threshold of like their late twenties or they go into their thirties and they get they start to get their woman bodies on top of that and it was like, well, I should have just waited because my body was naturally morphing into that. And then they have the people that's like she has said, um, people that get it but don't maintain it. Now, granted, I'm I'm really I had to dive into this like about a month or two ago because I I'm in um I'm in business with um a lady named well, a business a business that's, that has that says captivating bodies. I don't know what's her name, but um, and she's located on on Main Street. Y'all go give her a look. She but she does it the natural way. She's not putting no knife in your body. She's not sitting there cutting you up and draining this, that, and the third. But they do. I mean, we're in twenty twenty one. They have the technology to go target certain fat areas and uh, speed up your lymphatic drainage system and get all the fat out and like you can lose your stomach in not even a month's time. You know. So <clears throat> with that being said. She, I had to sit down and talk with her about how the stuff works, and you know, like if I want to be in business with her and stuff like that. And she's a she's an amazing lady. Miss Kathy is her name. She's an amazing lady, and she does it by the book, and she's very natural. But she made she just made it make sense. She she started explaining why you see a lot of people with like these these BBLs going on right now, but they're having all these health problems or like they're having these uh lifelong sufferings and scars and stuff like that because apparently. You have to get like once you get the surgery, there's like weeks of physical therapy you got to go through as far as like getting drainage massages and, you know, getting like lymphatic massages and getting body rolls and stuff like that. Because, you know, you have to swell in and you got all this other stuff that they didn't need to put inside your body or they didn't cut up that has to come out. And if you don't heal properly, you know, it's like you just out here just lumping up or you scarring up or you clogging up and it's messing up your body. And you know what that ultimately makes me think about? It's like when, especially as black, black people, when did we stop? When did we stop appreciating ourselves? Because at the end of the day, all this BBL stuff and all that type of stuff, they're modeling it after the modern African-American slash African woman, woman, you know? So with that being said, it's like, when do we stop appreciating how our bodies look and who we are? You know, we, we should be at a place now to where it's obvious that everything that we do, they copy it. Everything that we put our hands to, they try to appropriate it or they try to recreate it. You know, so instead of going and get a BBL, I mean, I see. And, you know, it's crazy because social media will really show you what you're interested in. And I don't see a lot of that stuff on my timeline, like especially on my Instagram. I see like a lot of I see more black women just enjoying their natural shapes and like just working out and getting in shape and showing like, oh, this is my six month to a year or two year transformation and stuff like that. I follow like a lot of um, bodybuilders and stuff like that because I mean, that's just what I'm into. But I I see a lot of people like really just going for real about that stuff. And then you see, I see stuff like this with the BBLs and all that other type of stuff. And I get it. You know, we living in a day and age to where it's glorified is in every rap, rap video. All the, all the do all the rappers is, is, you know, rapping about, well, I got my good breast done. I got my gut behind done and blah, 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 blah. So I get it. You know, it's, it's, it's glorified. So the sheep going to run there. But at the same time, it's like you got you don't have like an inkling of like self-awareness or self-appreciation to where it's like I'd rather just let my body grow into that. Because, I mean, com- uh, contrary to popular belief, you can eat your way to there. The only the only reason well, I ain't gonna say the only reason why, but one of the major reasons why, especially black women have bigger butts than everybody else is because we have more muscles back there. They have more muscles back there. And then you put fat on top of that. It creates like the round plush look. It creates the, the big look like the real like the big butt look. But most people don't put the science behind it. Most people don't really think about it. Reasons why a lot of my clients that come to me, that's like, well, I want to lose weight. I want to slim my waist down this down the third but I don't want to lose my butt. I'll be like, well, when we do leg days and well, I'm, I'll tell you what, I'll put you in the surplus. I'll make sure because a lot of people think, well, you got to not eat nothing and really barely eat anything to lose weight. No, nah. especially not if you're working out with a trainer like me. I'm actually going to make you eat more because the amount of work we about to put in, we're going to build the muscles that you want. So let's build. Let's build your butt. If you don't want to lose it, whenever we start shredding down, let's build your butt. Okay. You probably don't work out a lot. You probably don't do a lot of resistance training. So I'm going to put you in a program at least six to eight weeks to where we really driving and focusing on what you need to be chiseled down or what you want to show more. You know, for me, one of my secrets is like, well, I'm even going to say secrets. One of my trades that I learned from like Charles Glass and people like that is like when you broaden a woman's shoulder when they're working out, when you start tightening the abs up, you start working in our day chest to make the, the breast lift up a little bit more. And you really start overloading on leg day, like really giving them like a strength, like the hardest day should be a, and heaviest day should be a leg day. Okay, 
for a little while 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 we're doing that make them eat a bunch like especially on leg day eat a whole bunch of carbs a whole bunch of carbs let all that muscle and, and all that stuff grow back there so when it's time to shred you didn't build so much muscle up back there and you didn't build so much muscle up in the area that you want to shine whenever all that weight well all the fat starts leaving and gets replaced with muscle and you start dropping in weight all that muscle stays so now you sitting upright now your chest is lifted. Now your your butt is is sitting how you want it to sit. Now your legs are all tight and your stomach flattened down. But whenever I try to sit there and explain it to people, oh, I don't, you don't have nothing that could go fast and blah 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 blah. And you know I you know I help people with the detox program. I have that linked in the uh in the in the caption for this video too. I have my detox programs. I have my products and stuff like that. It'll it's a ten day detox and I have a seven day one too. It'll help you. Now they got some people up here that did it. It'll help you. You'll drop ten to twenty pounds. But at the same time, if you don't couple that with, you know, eating right or doing right by your body or at least attempting to learn the science of the body, you know, and trying to rig it up some type of ways for your advantage. If you're not naturally shaped how you want to be shaped, then it's a losing battle, because even if you go get a BBL, even if you go do surgery, even if you go do this, that and the third, you have to maintain that. What they don't what the, what they what celebrities don't show y'all and what all these people that got money that's um getting paid to do stuff like this, what they don't show y'all is like the workouts that they have to do the physical therapy that they have to go through, the foods that they're eating, how they're eating, you know, having the money to just frequently do it if they really want to, you know, but people don't listen. People don't take the time to do it. You know, you see botched jobs and you see there's some, man, there was a lady, there was a parade we had in New Albany not too long ago. Um, I don't know who that lady was, but I'm knowing she had surgery. And because I was looking at how unproportionate her body was, I was like, you probably was, that probably was looking how you wanted to look the first few months. But now you just look like, you just got some, just somebody just put some pillows back there, bow, and you walk around with that diaper booty, you know. So it's it just it just really be blowing my mind how I see people just go the full lens and put all this money. Like you gotta think about it, you paying thousands of dollars for this when you can take them same thousands of dollars and actually, I'm not, and you ain't even gotta go crazy in the gym, but just get just get a routine, you know, pay a trainer, pay somebody like me to teach you how to eat right, build all your meal guides for you. Show you how to, you can eat what you want to eat, but here's the portions to eat it. Here's how much of what to eat. Okay, here's what you need to work out on and blah, 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 blah. And then now you have long lasting results. And now you have a formula to create the body that you want to with or without your trainer. But I, but every time I need something, I'm going to go drop about three to $5,000. You know, like is and granted, I get it. You know, people have, people have genetic, certain genetic weaknesses and certain genetic tendencies to where like some people's bodies just naturally store fat a lot longer than other people in certain areas. People that had kids stuff change, but, but as somebody who studies the anatomy and studied these bodybuilders and the science behind it and stuff like that. And even the aesthetic trainers and the celebrity trainers, man, if you, there's a diet and there's a workout plan for everybody. It's just whether you want to take the time to do it or not. And it's really on you. If you want to go get your BBL, that's on you, but don't come crying to coach Brian whenever you out here and you got all these problems. You know, and then like you didn't really do it the right way. At least go do it, do it by like a, a good doctor, a real doctor. You know what I'm saying? Like get your get your stuff squared away. Cause if not, you're gonna have a square booty. Cause look, you got some people out here. They be getting these implants and stuff like that. And then you see them like 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 I don't know how I would feel if I was to go to get some surgery, and then like I didn't heal properly or something wasn't placed right. Cause at the end of the day, it's not something you can do for yourself. You have to trust somebody else to do it for you and, and like and do the surgery for you. If I could grab my butt, because I saw like this white lady, she had it and like her implants had rotated some type of way. So it's like she was like doing, she was like, look, and she was like grabbing her butt and like pulling it up and you could see it like just floop. It was just flopping. I was, and the first thing I was like, that didn't hurt. And two, I'm sitting there like, how much money you paid for this to have them little, it looked like, you know, them little, um, what they call? Oh, what them things dog gonna call? You know, them little cartons, like them egg cartons. You know how they look whenever like... <laughs> When they empty and say you rip them in half, they got the little, it's like space lump, space lump, space lump. It's like she was flipping it and you could see like, it looked like an egg carton was just up in there flipping. And I'm sitting there like, was it, was it really worth it? You know, did you really put your thing down, flip it and reverse it? You know, was it, was it really worth it? I don't, I don't know about all that. People be, I don't know, people be on some other stuff. That it, it That's just funny to me. I don't, I just, I don't know. I guess I'm different. I just wouldn't. Cause like, I'm gonna be real with y'all. I wasn't like, granted, I got into like, being healthy and you know working on my body this that and the third because like i wanted to look I, I, it's an aesthetic i was after you know because if y'all if y'all know me growing up like jessica and uh let me see who else jessica brie cree 
um, Kev, all of y'all. Like y'all remember me when I was like 2013. You know what I'm saying? Whenever I was, I was all of that, and like I was just small. I was small. Like, and I'm still, I'm still like small frame, but like I was really, really small. You know, and but I started working out the past two years. You know, I really, I took like five, six years to really study this stuff, but I started implementing it like a year or two ago. You know, and then everything started really lining up for my body. And then, you know, of course, uh, I got I got COVID and then I had lost like I think I lost like 20 pounds. So, you know, I'm I'm right back onto the journey of rebuilding. My, I was about to go into phase two of my bodybuilding, but now I'm back at like phase one point five. And I'm kind of taking it a lot easier because like, well, granted, I'm going hard on my body, but it's like I have a different mindset on how I want to look aesthetically and I'm not in a rush. You know, it's like if anything, I'm just at the place to where it's like I'm real. I'm finally happy with myself. You know, so it's like all the muscles and stuff that's like how I'm going to look by like next year. That's going to be, well, shoot, by February. Yeah, that's going to be what I want. You know, but it's like I'm not in a rush. You know, it's like I'm happy, but I'm content with myself. I've always been. I've always been happy with myself. I have my insecurities here and there, but overall, I'm content with myself. What are y'all saying in this comment section? It's going crazy. Baby should have just taken the fat and placed it somewhere. <laughs> Straight arms and legs. She out here looking like the little T with a little period on the back. This is horrible. Oh my god, y'all silly. But yeah, man, it's it's crazy. It's like, and and I get it. Like, I don't know. It's like to me, it's a it's a slap in the face because it's like, why are we paying for something that we naturally look like? You know what I'm saying? It's like, especially down here, down in the south, it's like people are naturally thick. People are naturally thick. People are naturally curvy. It may not be the best shapes. But we got shapes. It may not be the best one, but we got shapes in New Iberia. You know, but work with what you got and make it work. Be different. I don't want to look. I don't know. That's just me. I don't want to look like nobody else. I don't want to go to the same doctor, get the same booty. I don't want to get the same boobs. I don't want to get the same face. Y'all can all look like the $3,000 job that y'all got. I want to look like me. And whatever I turn into is going to be the best me possible. And as it is what it is. You know, it's like I'm not about to, I'm not about to stress myself behind what i do or don't look like that's just that's just not me i'm not built like that and, you know and a lot of people really shouldn't be built like that because you'll be surprised that's another thing too it's like y'all not scared because I, I ain't gonna say surgery petrifies me but it's like i'm glad that he said wait some of them thick some looking like a second pack of ground we about to stop this live stream that's not this is not what the lord told us to do on this day <laughs> Y'all see why I can't take Cree nowhere? Cree is foolish. But um, that boy made me forget what I was about to talk about. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I don't remember what I was talking about. That dude foolish, boy. But overall, what I'm getting at is just be yourself. Just really, really be yourself and 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 walk into who you're really supposed to be as a person. And be fine with that, bro. Because at the end of the day, there's somebody for everybody. There's this lady right now that's viral, crazy viral on social media right now. Ain't got no teeth. You know, she barely got any hair or anything like that. And she got a like, and like their whole thing on Instagram is like, they're a real, and they've been a real life couple. Cause everybody in the comment section been validating the, um, the, the, the truth seekers and like the proofreaders and stuff like this. Like, nah, they've been together since before Instagram popping and blah, 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 blah. And I'm sitting here like, there's somebody for everybody, you know, because I've been seeing, you know, it's been crazy. I've been seeing a lot of people on social media. Like they had, um, this one girl I follow. Well, one friend I was well, associate, this one associate that I have, and she had posted, um, it was a guy had like a letter that he had gave to this girl. And he was like, um, to keep you out of your little funky mood, I'm going to just go ahead and pay for uh, your rent for uh, for the whole year or whatever. And it was like a stack of hundreds of rolls and then like all this other type of stuff. And then she had put, what am I doing wrong with my life? You know, like, well, I, sh I just need to restart and blah, 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 blah. And I just be sitting here like. Is it, it's like, that's, that's what you, like, granted, that's, that's dope. That's, I will say that's dope. But the average nigga don't make that type of money. You know, it's like, I can understand the desire. I can understand the want. But if we being realistic, baby, it's just better to make your own money and get it how you live than to be waiting on something like that. You know, it's like, I just be seeing so, so just, un, and then this, and where we at, Lord, it's like, it'd be just so unrealistic. I, I, what I find realistic is somebody being able to work hard or accomplish what you need to accomplish 
oh, well, shoot, out here the people be scamming. Scam your way to whatever you got to do and take care of your own bills. Just don't get caught. That's on y'all because, look, I ain't going to say whether the scamming is right or wrong. Granted, it's not something I do. But, I mean, I I know for a fact I ain't crazy because I saw when them PP, PPP loans was hitting. I saw when people's lives started changing, especially when the unemployment was hitting. And I was like, y'all niggas better be careful. And for the pe- and don't get me, and don't get me wrong, look, as people who are economically suppressed, we are not in access of the same information that a lot of people got to obtain wealth. You know, for the people that that did, people, everybody got their reasons. But you got the people, you got some people that did that and went overboard with it. Out here trying to get a milli. You know, what I'm saying you got people out here like really going crazy with that stuff, and it's like, okay, yeah, if you got your few little tens in uh, and you under the radar, that's cool. But let's be realistic, especially if the IRS and the government watching us and you don't really bring in. If, first of all, you ain't got no business listed. Uh, if you ain't really bringing in no money like talking about it, and them niggas see you got like a million dollars. I think it was the dude in the dude in Florida is what I'm talking about specifically. It was like a guy in Florida. He had he had amassed like I think it was like one point five or like two point seven million dollars in PPP loans. And I'm sitting here like, boy, you're risky. And they and they, they caught him. They got him. I was saying, like, why you just didn't, I don't know, if it was me, I would have schemed different. At least come up with, like, four or five different aliases and then do that. You know, like, create your own person or create, like, a person that don't exist through a VPN or a private IP or something like that. And, you know, like, didn't go do it like that. But y'all out here wilding. Y'all out here wilding for real. Shoot. But, you know, if y'all if y'all still got some more of that PPP money. And, you know, and you sitting on a couple of thousands, you know, you, you can slide it this way. You know, I ain't saying no. I ain't saying no. See, I didn't say scamming was wrong. I just said do it right. <laughs> right, Bree? Just take your 10 to 20 and just keep it moving. Because, look, that's what I would have did. If I would have did that, got my, my little quick little come up, invest that money. Because, shoot, nigga like me, whenever I'm going to get my first real big lick, I am going straight to real estate. I don't care what nobody says. And that's another thing. Don't let – I've been doing so much research on, like, just the geology of the land and everything that's going on around us. We have a bunch of land still available, and we have a bunch of abandoned homes. Don't let them think, oh, well, we crowded, we overpopulated. Majority of every city in, well, not even just Louisiana, in America, like, I think it's like 30 to 40 percent of all the buildings in the area are abandoned. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, get you a lick and go get you an uh, abandoned home. You know, or, or like, I'm not saying, oh, cause, but people don't understand. Well, I'm going to put all that money in there and I don't want to live in there. I'm still paying rent, blah, blah, blah. The whole point, it's a long game. It's not instant gratification. You get your you get your bread up. You know, we're going to talk about entrepreneurship today. That's what we're going to do. That's that's one of the things. You're gonna, you just get your bread up, you know, and then, like, you go and you, once you get the property or you get the um the building or the whatever you need to, that you feel like buying, you know, you build it up. You renovate it. You be cost efficient, you know, but don't don't do it to where like you cheap and then stuff really breaking down because you remember it's an investment. You got you're gonna get out what you put in. You know, so even if it's cheap, or if you're getting it for cheap, make sure it's of good quality. Cause you got some people that give you some good quality work for a little nothing. Like Chris said, you don't have to spend all your man man. You know, but <laughs> you do it like that. And then it's a long game. Rent it out or sell it. Just be somebody that flip houses. I mean, it's a granted, it depends on where you at and the type of stuff that you're doing or you have a lot of too, cause like you don't necessarily have to rent out houses to make money or flip houses to make that type of money because you got people that just, they strictly flip houses and millionaires, but they're in an area to where like the property value and the state value and stuff like that is real high. So once you get something for real cheap and you renovate it and your cost difference as opposed to like, because the, the real profit, the, the profit comes from whenever you, it took you X amount of dollars to possess this, renovate it, put it on the market and advertise. Now, what you sell it for or what the people are going to buy it for is going to be a cost difference. So say it took you $90,000. Well, okay, let's be a little bit more uh, for people that don't have that right now. Let's say it took you twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 to like really get that house to where you want it to be. But it it appraises and it's on the market. You can sell it for about ninety. dollars That cost difference is your profit. That closing cost is going to be your profit. You know, so once, and it may sound, I'm telling you, all it may sound like a lot. A work, this, that, and the third, but just chip at it, go day by day, and put your little money to the side. You'll be surprised how much money y'all really wasting throughout the year just by eating out all the time, going to the club all the time, doing this, that. I remember I was in Houston, and we had a uh, we had a show, right? This dude, I kid you not, this dude was up there. He said, I just go off work. I'm ready to have a good time. You know, we're on the stage going in. I'm going in. All I'm seeing is, like, it just started raining on the stage. I'm like, 
in the back of my mind, I was like, damn, this is what it feel like to be a stripper. I might have to go be a stripper. This feel good. But, you know, snap it back to it. I'm looking. I'm like, man, that's a lot of money on this dog on stage. I was like, but, you know, we performing, so you can't really pick it up how you want to right now. So we get towards the end of the show, and he was really the only person that was throwing the money, like, talking about it. Man had dropped, like, two, three hundred dollars. And I'm sitting here like, and that's just, this is just one crazy, say it's just a drunk night he have, or just is him on a regular. You know, it's like, dude, just spending money like that? And the average person in the in the bar, you know, you got y'all spending money on drinks. It's the overpriced drinks on that. Y'all getting tips and stuff. So y'all giving tips and stuff like that. Imagine if every Friday or, or the weekend, instead of you going out, you know, you putting that money, the money you would spend, you put that to the side. And say you just save for however long or until you need a blah, 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 blah. And then you get some money up. And you're working on your credit. Okay, you go to the bank, you get your loan of first time, you know, home buyer's loan or something like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you mailed all that money together. So now you've amassed, let's say about, let's say about fifty fifty thousand dollars. So you've put fifty thousand dollars into purchasing this, renovating this, doing this and the third. But it appraises to about, like I said before, about like ninety thousand dollars on the market. Even if it even if it's like seventy thousand dollars on the market, that's still more than or equal to equal to or more than twenty thousand dollars worth of profit you can get. You know what I'm saying? So it's like and you just keep flipping and keep flipping and keep flipping and keep flipping and keep flipping. And that's one way to do it. Or you build it up and you rent it out. And now you didn't rent it out, you averaging on the low side about six to seven hundred dollars a month. On the low side, because shoot, rental property and stuff like that, the prices of that going up these days. You know, so it's like have you wanna get it. It's how you can get it. And even in like in uh in real life, being that we found, we just talking about entrepreneurship and how to make money. Um, for all my people that's in like the cert, like if you I I put it to you this way, because I was somebody who wanted to start a business, but I didn't have a lot of capital. I had a lot of money saved up because I knew I was about to quit to start going into my own business, but I didn't necessarily have the capital to just be spending like that. You know, so oftentimes you starting a service business rather than a product based business off the rip you're guaranteed more profit you know we can i can send y'all links and we could talk about the legalities legalities of taxes and stuff and how to do stuff the right way and blah 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 because i man look i'm not paying no unnecessary taxes because you already know how i feel about the irs trying to come in and take money from people that we already don't have are we trying to get it how we live you feel me so it's like you start a service business first because it's more profitable because the cost difference between like say stuff what I do, I do personal training and stuff like that. If you want, say you a one-on-one -on -one client with me and you want to pay me weekly, that's about $115 a week. But you're getting custom workouts according to your bodies, your wants and needs. You're getting meal plans. You're getting, you're getting a uh, nutrition direction. You're getting full access to all the information. You get checkups. You get call, You get all that type of stuff. I mean, X screen them. They, they're involved in all of that, you know, and the services are great, but that one fifteen I make, a, I'll make a week from, let's say if I have one client, that 115 is more profitable and comes more to me because I to say the only thing I have to get is like some resistance bands or if I already have access to a gym or something like that. Let's say it's pure profit. I just made $115 a week. But if I have a product-based business, it's going to cost me about $70 just to get it because these days people want quality for little to nothing, but it costs people an arm and a leg to get quality, you know? And I have, a seven, I have $70 I got to put in and the rest of that money got to go into either get more quality redistrib redistribution or some other type of stuff. And I come out with a profit of like $12 from that $115 exchange, depending on what I'm selling, you know? So, and this is free game, y'all. I'm trying to, I'm trying to tell you, if you somebody that's trying to start a business uh, and look, that's nothing. Don't look down on any type of service. I was, man, look, when I was working at the airport, I was finding ways to hustle. I clean your car. I'll, I'll, I'll help you with your rentals. You know, it's like I, when I got some personal training, I help you do this, that, and the third. It don't matter. Don't look down on any service because that same, like, especially like, you know who really be making money? The real silent winners that don't be saying nothing? People that clean houses. You got some people that clean houses, especially like in like wealthy areas, get paid thousands of dollars a month just to keep the house clean. And to them, especially if you're a good cleaner and you know how to clean, I mean, was that like a few hours to make like a, a few, like you dedicate a few hours every once in a while throughout the month for somebody's house to make thousands of dollars. You know what I'm saying? And especially if you're getting paid cash, you ghosting, like you off the radar, you know? So it's like, you ain't got to worry about taxes and all that other stuff. If it's just cash, you know what I'm saying? You watch how you spend, you watch how you move this, that, and the third, you know, we'll talk about all that stuff later if y'all really want to. 
But what I'm getting at is that start your service business. If you don't, if you want or use this business to fund your other dreams on top of and say, and say you somebody like me, when I was, when I first started my business, I didn't necessarily quit right off. You know, I still was kind of skeptical about it. So it's like, I started off half service, half product. Granted, I didn't know the, the stuff I know now about business, but I started off half service, half product. So it still required a few paychecks, you know, for me to get like I was doing. Um, Y'all remember my CBD toxins and stuff like that, which I'm about to bring back. I just want to make sure I had like I, I didn't learn so much. I'm about to change the game, y'all. But like the CBD tox and stuff like that is like I started off with services, but I didn't have as many clients. But people was buying all my fruit juices. People was buying all of my programs and stuff like that. You know, so that was funding other things. And like when you get say if your goal is to get into real estate or to get into um, stock portfolios and stuff like that, which require a lot of capital from the rip to make a big gain early or quickly get into another business that's going to fund your bigger business or your dreams. Because if you don't and you just penny pension and you work in your nine to five, I'm not saying that's not a, um, that's not a bad thing because some people get paid decently and know how to manage their money, you know, and shout out to the people that do that because that's hard. Nine to fives or not. I'm saying nine to five. But you got people like like me that used to work 12 hour shifts on average, 12 hour shifts, trying to run a business, trying to do extra things, probably got kids and stuff like that. You know, and like she said, use it as a stepping stone, you know, and put all use up, put all that money to the side. And once your stuff get booming, it booms. And that's another thing. Stop thinking people that have their own businesses and that's entrepreneurs got all this time in the world. We don't. We really don't, because if I really had all the time in the world, I would this, these podcasts and these live streams I'm doing would be like two, three hours long. Like I typically have to stop my podcast at like I mean, in my live streams at about like nine thirty because I got to be way in Bruce Hall to go train my clients, you know. So it's is don't stop. Stop just being, oh, can you come here? Can you do that? Blah, blah, blah. Well, you ain't really working a job. I'm actually working 24 seven. That's the thing about entrepreneurship. You go from working however many hours a day at your job to work in 24 seven because you ain't no clock to punch in. That's And that's another thing. If you want to get into this entrepreneurship stuff and you really going to try to run your own business and live off of it, like I've been doing for the past three years, but D one of my biggest driving forces is that I don't clock in. I really don't. I don't have nobody to just hand me a check. I'm not, I can't just go clock in and get these hours. You know, I can't just go sit at the job and do barely do anything and still get paid, you know, and be lazy at it. Nah, bro. Every day I got to wake up. I got to seek God about what I need to do for the day. I need to do it. And whatever I get is what I get, you know, because at the end of the day, it's all formulas. It's really all formulas. Once you, because people are like, oh, well, they cracked the code, they blah, 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 blah. It's a formula to getting this money as an entrepreneur. Is it easy? No. Can anybody learn these steps and get and get this formula? Pretty much so. But the execution is because not everybody know how to run advertisements, make advertisements. Not everybody know how to do a good product. Not everybody knows how to do outreach and networking. Not everybody knows how to work computers and stuff. Man, you know how much stuff I had to learn the past three years on how to make POS systems, how to work through a POS system, how to do how to do your own taxes, how to do all is that like so much stuff, financial stuff I had to learn, so much technology, so much advertising stuff I had to learn. And I'm thankful because it's like now I'm at a point to where I can help others. And that's my that's my thing. It's like I may not be making one hundred thousand dollars a year. It's coming, but I might not be making that right now. But for what I do know, because I tell it to anybody, somebody making on average forty to fifty thousand dollars as an entrepreneur, as opposed to doing a nine to five, that's a different type of fifty thousand dollars. That's a different type of money because it's one of them things to where it's like, how can I put it? It's one of them things to where it's like, bro, look, you you got to, it's a different type of hustle. It's a different type of manifestation that comes when you got to get it on your own rather than clocking in. You feel me? So you got to make sure that if you're going to really choose this entrepreneurial life, bro, you got to, good morning, Joy. Joy is another one. Joy is somebody who, um, and I'm so glad she did it. Joy is somebody who's not only could just sing the, the walls off of a building, but she will, she got started in her um her photography journey, right? And she came out the gate doing the best she could. And but she invested in herself. She learned, 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 learned. She took the time, you know, and she created a service. A service business. She got her rights together and stuff like that. She knows the business. And now look at her. Her products are sharp. Her business is booming. She figured out the formula. She put the work in. You know, so it's one of the things to where it's like. Man, come on over to the entrepreneurial side if y'all want to, but do it how you need to do it for you. Yeah, it's it's real. It looks real good to 
hop into it and oh i got to quit my job and i got out the mud blah 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 that's my story and i'm thankful for my story you know i'm glad that it worked out for me like that but nine times out of ten majority of people can't do that majority of people not built for that majority of people have too many responsibilities to even do that and can't take that type of risk that's a risk i started this let's see i'm 26 i started i started really doing this when i was like 23 22 23 years old you know, so it's like, I'll, granted, I wasn't living with my parents, but like I still had bills and I had responsibilities, but I ain't had no kids. You know, I ain't in no real big debt, nothing like that. You know, I wasn't worried about like college fees and stuff like that. Like my weight was different, you know, but thank God that I figured out how to like really get these services and products going. And now, you know, I'm doing what I got to do and I'm living off of it, you know, and thank God for that. But as much as I would love for that to be everybody's story majority of people don't do that majority of people still got to work a job majority of people still got to do and even and i and even as an entrepreneur that made it like that i still like doing things on the side it's like granted fitness and nutrition is like one of my my biggest incomes when it comes down to my business and living in life but i mean i make just as much money doing music you know i still perform i still train people i still make music for people i still record i still mix and master i still make uh beats and stuff like that you know i'm still doing raw captures and all of that so it's like I'm still very present in the music area, but it's just not the forefront right now because it's like what I'm trying to do right now. And it's, it's about the things about to shift because I got some music stuff I've been working on behind the scenes for a little while now. And I just, you know, you got to plan with music is different. Music is about rollouts. You can have you got some people that and I talk about a lot, but a lot of people don't really want to hear it because they think either you got to be Beyonce to make money or you got to be, you know, whatever to make this type of money. But there's a thing called middle class musicians. You got people that's touching some bread and they don't have no more than five to ten thousand uh, followers on their Instagram, Facebook, all of that. But there's a science behind it. I tell that to anybody. At the end of the day, a business is a business. If as long as pitch, just imagine this. Imagine you being an artist who has not and not even two thousand followers. Let's just say you got fifteen hundred follow. Uh, let's say you got a thousand to fifteen to fifteen hundred followers. But all of those people are real fans. And there are real people that support what you do and like they actually come to your page because they love your music and your, your brand and your aesthetic and all of that. Imagine getting at least twenty dollars from them people every month, whether that be in streams, whether that be in merchandise, whether that be in them coming to shows, whether that be in support for the thing or whatever. Like imagine getting twenty dollars from from not even each of those people, but at least the majority of those people. Imagine getting twenty dollars from just 100, 200 people a month. So I'm saying like it's a it's a. Man, there's so much money in this music game that people don't really realize. So as like, cause a person like me, like I keep saying this over and over and over again, y'all could keep the fame. I don't want that. Give me my notoriety. Give me my consistent fan base. Give me my good business when it comes down to my music and my merchandise and my this, that, and the third. Let me tour. You know, let me go out on the road and make. Cause I don't need to be signing nobody. If I, if you pop and you pop, that's another thing too. There's a rise. An independent artist making a bunch of money because people will fi people are finally understanding to where you don't need like granted you need you need labels. I want to say it's the right way. You'll probably need a label to get like an international type like grand scheme, but you really don't. Even I'm saying that, but you really don't because it's like people like Russ. You know, like Russ started and is still independent. You know, he did his he worked his little deals here and there that helped with him for doing distribution and stuff like that. But, you know, he own all his stuff. He make all his stuff. You know, he get his team to do the services, this, that, and the third. And he is well past a, a middle-class musician, but he has, like, the book. It's, it's in my phone. I don't remember the title of it, but uh, there's a book that my friend Chaz gave me that um that Russ made. The blueprint is in there. And it's so and it's crazy because a lot of stuff that he's talking about is stuff I was already doing. And you can take that. What's going on, Donald? Good morning. And you can take that same philosophy and you can take those same systems and it doesn't have to be just making money and music like that. That same philosophy you can use for your services, like we talked about, for your products, for whatever. Like, see, with this live stream stuff, I'm really about to go all in. I didn't really foresee myself doing this, but it's like I'm going to take this and I'm really going to start putting it on YouTube. You know, all this stuff. I'm going to really start putting stuff on like iTunes and all of that and really start getting like the vision and getting the conversations out there because it's like people tune into podcasts all day, every day. People go onto YouTube all day, every day. I'm about to redo how all of this stuff look up in here because even I'm getting tired of seeing that one little tapestry back there. Cause like that is probably the most unesthetically pleasing part of my studio. For everybody that's been up here, they know all this other stuff, the booth and all this, the my, you know, my swords and my books and my posters and my speakers and my gear and all of that. 
my real like I have a wall full of instruments. All the instruments I own are right like on this side of me. And it's like that's probably the most aesthetically pleasing part of my studio. But y'all been seeing this for the past what two weeks now? So it's like I'm about to just redo all of that because you know people care about what they see when it comes down to looking at stuff like that. But I say all that to say, you know, there's a formula to this entrepreneurship. You know, and we living in a day and age to where YouTube is free and Google is free. Now, the things you might have to sacrifice and yet and the work you might have to put in, that's not free. You know, you you might have to pay for a few classes to learn about certain things and really invest inside of yourself. But just do it, bro. Because the money is out there to be made. Like, you got, you, prime example, Um, what's her name? Kior, Keisha Kior, Gucci Man, uh, wife or whatever. Excuse me. She, um, she do like the, the tees. She do like the body wraps and uh, all that type of stuff, right? Millionaire, making buku money off of it. Did anybody else whenever it comes down to she said child the truth because i'm tired of culinary school but you could cook though you real fire you real fire with it trust me that you got some the stuff you be making that can blow up i just i feel like for you uh jessica when it comes down to your business it's, it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when because the right people need to see and experience your food and your aesthetic because you do something in new iberia well louisiana that I don't see a lot of people doing and it don't come off that way. You know what I'm saying? Like the way you dress your plates, the way you talk about your food, the names that you put for the dishes and stuff like that. You know, it's like for you, I don't feel like, cause I feel like you've put in so much work when it comes down to like, and plus you just know how to cook. A cook is a, a good cook is a good cook, period. You can be in culinary school all you want to. Yeah. You can learn the tricks of the trade, all of that. When it comes down to people these days, especially with like successful food trucks and brands and blah, 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 blah. Does the food look good? Does the food taste good? That's the only thing people be worried about. You know, but for you, I feel as though take you should take the time. And I and I don't, you know, I don't want nobody to misconstrue what I'm about to say. She's not lazy. I'm not saying she's lazy. I'm not saying that she doesn't know what she's doing. But just my personal advice to her, um, because I don't, I, like I said, I don't know what she's doing behind the scenes. It's just more so focused on outreach, you know, because you have the look. Like you look like it's crazy because if y'all didn't seen Jess like dressed up whenever she cooking and stuff like that, she got a very professional look, a very professional look, you know, and her food looks like her, like her food looks professional. Her food looks good. It's and then the smell. Well, she had that building smelling so dark. I was so hungry. Um, But like for you, it's just more so, you know, I would say get with joy. Joy's inside the um inside this this live stream right now. Get with joy and start doing like headshots because people want to see who you are and you're not ugly. You're far from ugly. You know, get you get you some headshots, get you some culinary shots, which you like with your, your spoons and spatulas holding some plates in front of the thing or whatever. And then have like real professional pictures of like your dishes and stuff like that. And then start spamming that on social media, you know, start submitting that and emailing that to people, you know, trying to. And then you make like what's called an EPK. It's called electronic press kit. And it's basically like this in so many it's like an elevator pitch of who you are what you do and showing what you have and you start sending that to the right people you know sending that to like restaurants or events and blah 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 you blow up boom 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 you know and it's like that's just how the game go people go people will rock with you simply because one of two things and it's sad but it's true they see other people rocking with you so they're curious or they want to be on that bandwagon or two because you look you look like you're something Cause I'm not a flashy person, you know, but I know for a fact with the stuff I'm going to have to do for the next phase of like music rollouts and stuff I got to do, I got to wear certain things. I got to look a certain type of way because that attracts the people, you know, but, and I said, and that's for anybody inside of this uh, live stream right now. If you having a business, I'll tell you this, make sure all foundationally, make sure your products and your knowledge of your products and your services and stuff like that. You are well sound. You're well versed. You understand what you're doing and what you're pitching to people. Make sure that's that's what it needs to be. But overall, you need an aesthetic. And don't try to look like everybody else that's out there because when you start looking like other people and all that other type of stuff, it just doesn't work. Because they, we have enough Kim Kardashians. We have enough Kanye Wests. We have enough, uh, what's that man named? Jeff Gordon, whatever his name is, the, the chef. We have, enough, we have enough of those. We don't have enough of y'all. People want to see... What Jessica got going on. People want to see a professional version of Jessica. People want to see Brie. People want to see Creed. People want to see Joy. Like, that's another talk I had with Joy. I was like, exactly, stay in your lane. Because the more you stay in your lane and the more you really tend to your own grass and you water it, I mean, what what else is there to, to worry about? Because, like, and that's the thing, too. Confidence sells. 
a lot of people don't want to get in front of them cameras and don't want to take them professional headshots and this, that, and the third, or take business shots of like their services and their products and stuff like that, and they missing out because what looks crazy or your insecurities that like how it pulls you away from certain things what looks crazy to you may look innovative to somebody else you know what i'm saying the worst people can say is no that's the worst they can say keep trying there's billions and millions and billions of people not only in the united states but in the world all it takes is the right people seeing and are hearing about you and getting involved reasons why i stop harassing people in the dms i stop harassing people in the group messages i stop harass man look I'm going to send my little advertisements here and there. I'm going to post on here. But whatever, whoever feel like they're going to rock with me and whoever going to be a part of the team and part of the crew and whoever going to be a part of my business and service, I welcome you. But if not, you're just not for me. Maybe that's just not my season. is not your season. It is what it is. But as long as I stay a student of my craft and my service and I'm out here really getting my look together, my aesthetic together, and I'm presenting to people. because even And that's the thing. I'm not saying fake it till you make it. But be who you are before people tell you who you are. Before you get hundreds of clients, before you get all of this money and all that type of stuff, you know how you want to look. Look that way. Present yourself that way. Carry your services and your products the best of what you can with what you have. Link up with people who have fellow services or can get you your aesthetic that you want, you know, and promote that. Promote your vision. Promote your image. Promote your services and products. And once you start doing that, Everything else booms. Why do you think like McDonald's and them and all of them type of people, they're doing so well? Because you got an advertisement on TV with them like always just putting some type of stuff that people want to see. They have a demographic. But whenever you're driving on your main streets and your center streets and wherever you're at in your city and you see the line long and you, they already got that red and yellow and them colors is meant for attraction. They make you hungry. Don't think they're picking those colors for no reason. Like I said before. Every color has a has a meaning to it. You know, like you see all of that and it's enticing. Well, I want to go see what they're hitting on. Oh, well, I am hungry. Let me go to McDonald's. Let me go to blah, 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 blah. You know, but like not a lot of people going to put two and two together. Not a lot of people going to sit there and really understand how the game works. But take the time and be a student of your own craft. Because when you do that, that's when the money comes. That's when the good services come. That's when everything else that you want to happen in your business start happening. You feel me? So... And I may sound like I'm beating a dead horse, but like it's really, it's really that simple. When you really take the time to really try to figure out like your business and all this other type of stuff, it's really that simple. But not a lot of people are gonna take the time to do it. But you be that person. You be the difference. You be that person that's gonna sit there and take the time to figure out your craft, execute it, and then a year or two, or a week or two, or a month or two, however long it takes, a day or two, when you popping. And everybody on your case, guess what? Well, what you did? And then they start coming. Oh, what you did? How you blah, 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 blah. I stayed in my lane. You know, I, I worked on my craft. I worked on my image. Because that's another thing. People are going to believe what you show them. I mean, other than, like, it, it re- like that's, that's really how they get y'all on social media. And that's really how they get y'all with these products. They put people of great notoriety. Or they, they, they look a certain type of way. They know what people want to see. They know what people deem as beautiful, sexy, and attractive. They put them people all over their page. Or they have they dress up like that. That's their aesthetic, and then they promote those products like that. And once they do that, guess what? Everybody in their mama want to get on it now. But you don't know what that person is really like in real life. You don't know what that person looks like on a day to day basis. You only know what you see. Everybody likes to feel like they know they they like their favorite artists. Oh, I love. Them. I've been listening to their music all my life. I just like I know them. Blah blah blah. You don't really know them people. Them people selling you an image. Them people are selling you a certain type of content that they see that their demographic loves and that their demographic buys, and they're going to feed into that. They're going to stay genuine to what brings them revenue, and that's just what happens. That's just that's how that's how capitalism works these days, you know. But you got people like us that stay true to ourselves, that stay true to what we're good at, and we try to work the business as truthfully and best as we know how. Because the more that we do that. The more that we find ways to not only enhance our business, but we enhance our because for me, I'm all about community. You know, it's like God going to send me who I need. You know, I'm going to do my work. I'm going to still because God ain't going to just give it to you. You got to work. I'm going to still do my part. But God going to send me who I need. God going to send me the money that I need. God, God going to provide for me as long as I'm putting in my work. And guess what? I ain't trying to be the next whoever, whatever. I'm trying to be the next me. I'm trying to be the, the better version of me. I'm trying to do what's best for me, because if I don't do that and if we don't do that as a people, where are you going to go? 
expecting everything and everybody to hand stuff to you and just give it to you. As good and as amazing as that may sound and how luxurious that may sound, that's not really a life that's going that's going to last. It don't people get tired of giving people stuff and not getting nothing back in return. Or people just mooching off of them. You know, so it's like just take the time to invest inside yourself. If you don't know what to do, and see that's another thing too. It's not hard to figure out like, cause you got some people that's just pure hustlers, you know, they're not tied to no brand and all like, they're not really tied to no product. Is that in the third, whatever they got to flip, buy, resell, recreate, nigga rig service. It don't matter. They're going to do what they got to do to make their money. That'd be them. That'd be geniuses too, because it's like, they have no pride and cause money, money is money. You know what I'm saying? You got people that flip Nutri-Grain bars. You got people that flip water. You got people that flip juice. You got people that flip whatever they need to flip. And guess what? making bank out here making money so don't don't belittle yourself and don't put yourself in a box if you feel as though you got to do whatever you got to do to hustle and flip and do what you got to do to make your bread do that and don't let nobody tell you otherwise people are looking at me crazy for um doing my research and then putting all of these fruits and infusing waters with fruits and herbs and all that type of stuff and trying to sell it I ain't nobody gonna buy that that stuff don't blah 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 all the people who had inflammation uh Problems started buying it. All the people who had erectile dysfunction couldn't get their stuff hard. They started buying it. All the people that have problems with um circulatory problems and like need to get in shape, they started signing up. All the people who had all these type of problems and need to get it fixed and they're looking for holistic healing rather than medicine, they came to me. I started making money. I kept making money for the past three years. You know, so it's like stay in your lane. Like you just said, stay in your lane and just do it and stay true to what you're doing and everything else will follow. Everything else will be what it needs to be. But if you're not that type of person to, I guess, be original and stay true to yourself, don't try to do this. If you want it just for the money and for a quick come up and instant gratification, don't do it. Because you'll, this is, this is something, it's different working for yourself. Like, I feel like one of the, as an entrepreneur, one of the worst things you could feel, and you're going to feel it. You're going to feel every entrepreneur has to go through it to get to that, that the level that we're all about to get to. But it ain't nothing worse than solely working for yourself. You're not you don't have like a corporate job. And like you really all your money is dependent on you. And it's one of them days to where you really don't feel like working. You really don't feel like getting out of bed. You really don't. Life is busting you up and you really and stuff is already, like times is already money is already low. You know, it's like you don't have the you don't even have the money to put in your car to even go drive around and hand out flyers. You don't have the you know, like you you barely have enough money to pay your internet bill this, that and the third, but you gotta get up and put a smile on your face. You gotta make this content. You gotta make these advertisements, you gotta talk to these people, you gotta train these people, you gotta get up and do life. Stuff's not easy, bro. And if you're not willing to put that type of dedication and work in and really work for yourself and get it out of the mud, don't do it. Because you'll find yourself because it, it typically takes about three years for a small business to really take off and to really get to where it has to go on average. So if you ain't got three years, at least three years of hustle and three years of get up and three years of like sacrificing you or the patience of that. Just don't just don't do it, bro. I'm telling you. And I'm and I'm not trying to discourage nobody, but this is the things I wish people told would have told me before I decided to be the generational curse breaker in my family, because that's another thing. I'm doing stuff that a lot of people in my family haven't done. You know, I'm doing stuff different. Like I'm I, certain the way I live my life is different. The way I'm moving with my money is different. You know, and for all the people, entrepreneurs that are in my family that's doing it how they're doing it and getting it how they live, guess what? I look up to them. We talk, you know, and it's like, is there's no cheat code to it. You just got to do it. You know, she said, ooh, child, I'm on year two and the struggle. I, bro, look, I remember my year two. Around this time, and I was talking with Amber about this the other day because yesterday was our anniversary. And I was just so grateful. I was like, man, God God really came through for your boy this year because normally for somebody in my, my my service field that I do, when it gets cold, especially if you don't have your own building and stuff like that, people go. People don't care if this is your livelihood and this is the money that you need to make to move, to pay your bills and blah, blah, blah. People will go. People are going to leave. You're not going to get as much service coming in and out, blah, 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 blah. And this point last year, when I was at year two, Jess, I was at, I dread, I already hate with the cold season because I just hate cold. I'm a spring baby. I wish I was born in the Caribbean somewhere. But whenever, like around this time last year, I had if $10 to my name and was trying to, and had like almost, let's see, I had around the time the bills I had was roughly on my end was like almost two grand. I want to say I had to come up with I had to come up with two thousand dollars in like a week and a half. Like 
Yeah, bro. And y'all know me. I don't. I don't ask people for nothing. I don't ask my parents. I've been. I've been moved out of my parents' house since about 2013, when I got when I moved into college. And like, I don't ask my people for nothing. I don't ask my people for nothing. I will work. I will strive. I will go without before I ask anybody for anything. That's just how I am, you know. And it's like I didn't been there. Got more bills than money. Down and out. You know, people ain't rocking with you, but they, and that's so annoying. It's like, what is it to y'all to just share it? But people are not gonna share something they don't believe in. People are not gonna share something they don't feel like they need to share. You can't, you can't get mad at them for not sharing it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, because as, as business owners, we understand what it does for us. But them people only look at social media as social media. They don't really care. You know, it's like, oh well, you know, you got other people, blah blah blah. You're doing fine. People don't know the ins and outs. You're like, not like you're on social media every day saying, oh, I'm broke, y'all. I need money for my bills, y'all. Blah blah blah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you just got to make sure that you're willing to sacrifice for this stuff, bro. And like, you really get it how you live. Cause like, there was a point in time to where it was like, my business is worse than doing good. So guess what? I had to go do extra stuff. I had to go, I had to go make sure I was finding these extra gigs. I had to go make sure I was trying to flip this, that, and the third, come up with new products and find something to offer people for them to buy. Cause if not, guess what? I'm still going to go without, you know, there ain't nobody going to stop their life for me. Like nobody, nobody stopped their life for for other people. That's just how the game go. It is what it is, you know. So you just gotta figure it out. She said, "Let's not forget those. They rock with you just because of who you are." Oh, bro, that's a whole hour's worth. Of, we only got six minutes left. That's a whole hour's worth of a topic I could go into, because I I remember when I first started booming, and Coach Brian, could you find really started taking off? People started see because now I'm at the point to where I go in Walmart. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a good beat. Coach Brian was like I'm a I'm going to get people that I work with, people that I service. I'm I'm decently known. I ain't well known, but I'm decently known in my town right now for what I do. But I remember right before I boomed, bro, you had a whole bunch of people just, you know, they would like, share, blah, 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 blah. And would, I'm talking about wouldn't even donate a dollar. And, like, you know what's crazy? I'm that same person that would turn around and give hundreds of dollars to their foundation or to, like, their services or helping people out when they need and stuff like that. Wouldn't get that same love back, man. That joint hurt, and that that joint really make you feel a certain type of way because it's like you really down and out sometimes, or like you really trying to make a name for yourself, and you got somebody. I ain't I ain't gonna go into because y'all gonna know who I'm talking about, but you got people who out here who ain't doing half of what you're doing, you know, and they only getting traction because of their looks, or because of they they well because of their looks, you know, and it's like it's so this game could be so fickle, bro, but like that's just a test. Are you going to stick through it? Or are you going to dig deeper and figure out how to reach your audience? Because there's an audience. I promise you. Like, you can live well off of a 1,000 clients a year. You can live well. You can live very well. Because imagine those people. Imagine you have a 1,000 solid clients a year. Or just consumers. People that, that invest in your business. People that buy your products. People that take your services and stuff like that. You know, like just like most people are regular um, consumers and are are followers of foods like like raisin canes and chick-fil-a you got people that eat there religiously you know but like picture a, a solid thousand people rocking with you with your business and they giving you at least a good on the on the on the low side say each person giving you five dollars each a month you making five stacks a month off of those thousand people as opposed to big corporations that got hundreds of thousands of people just buying and selling it all up that's why whenever you be seeing they networked and like how stuff be moving up oh they lost this many x of these tens of millions of dollars they ain't no licks of walmart they ain't no many people got almost they, they i think they're a billion dollar company if not a little bit past a billion dollars like them people ain't worried about this that stuff bro so whenever like you really do the math of how you really make money profiting from services from uh based off a of clientele what is a thousand people it's it's a lot it's, it may not seem like a lot, but if you got, like I said, if you got a thousand people spend at least five to ten dollars on you a month, I mean, you you living you living good. You averaging five to ten thousand dollars a month, which puts you at fifty to a hundred thousand dollars a year off of people spending what's five ten dollars, like not even a full meal at Chick Fil A or at McDonald's or somewhere. They spend all that money on you in one month, and they don't they don't buy nothing from you for another month. Because I, I have clients like that; they'll spend a, f- a few little dollars here and there. I'm not gonna see them till next month. I'm not. They're not gonna buy nothing until next month. And I'm and look, I'm appreciative. Don't get me wrong, but it's like just imagine whenever we get to the point in our businesses to where we get the minimum of a thousand people spending five to ten dollars on us a month for our services and our products. 
by and and that's that starts that and I keep trying to tell people it takes about three years for a business to really take off. So picture at you, year three, you finally get that. So by year six, because you didn't did so like I was telling Jess, you now you have the clientele, but now you're focusing more so on outreach and networking this that and the third because your product is good and you're innovative, right? So whenever you keep going and say that clientele multiplies to you averaging banquets and you averaging like like all these hundreds of people per month, more than a thousand now is like you averaging hundreds of people a week now. And Lord knows how much, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you like, man, that it's easy to get this money, bro. Well, I ain't gonna say it's easy to get it. It's easy for it to start flowing and stay flowing. But you got to figure out your niche. You got to figure out your flow. You got to figure out your system. Who's your fan base? Who's your clientele? Who's your service listing? Who's your lexicon? Who's all those people? Because once you figure that out, bread, you're going to be making, you're going to be making crazy amount of bread. But that's my time, y'all. I got two minutes before I have to leave. So um, let's end with our, our normal affirmations. All right. Look yourself in the mirror or wherever you at. Say it out loud with me. Say, I am prosperous. I am a treasure. I am amazing. I am learning. I am open to learning. I am open to prosperity. I am open to winning. I am open to luxury. I am open to wealth. I receive abundance. I receive prosperity. I am no longer ignorant. I am gaining knowledge for myself. All right. I'll see you guys probably Monday. I don't know if I'll go live tomorrow. Sun definitely not Sunday. I don't know if I'll go live uh, tomorrow, but the link is in the uh, the little section up there. Y'all please like and share. Y'all go support. Y'all go donate if y'all want to go donate. Go get some products if y'all want to get some products, some services. It's whatever. Y'all hit me up if y'all have any questions or any topics y'all want to talk about. But I love y'all. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.